Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on Legionella. We are excited to have you here with us. My name is Jessica, and I'm the Marketing Director of Amtech. I will be moderating today's webinar. First off, we encourage everyone to participate by asking questions throughout the presentation. You can submit questions by clicking on Q&A at the bottom of your screen, and we will save some time at the end to go over the questions that came through. We will also be recording today's webinar, which will be made available on our website. To start off, for those of you who don't know, Amtech is an accredited laboratory in the San Francisco Bay Area, specializing in environmental health and safety testing and investigation studies. We service all your environmental testing needs from indoor air quality analysis to particle ID and DNA sequencing. Today's webinar will be led by Dr. Brooke Leo. Brooke is an expert in Legionella detection and testing methods, as well as identification of bacteria and fungi. We are also joined today by Thomas Young. Thomas directly oversees our environmental testing lab and is intricately familiar with various Legionella testing methods and sample types, as well as the identification of Legionella species. And with that, let's get started. Brooke? Thank you, Jessica. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Brooke Liu, currently the laboratory director for the environmental testing at Impact. So for today's webinar, we are going to give you a comprehensive introduction for Legionella, including what is Legionella, the guidelines for Legionella regulation, and the recommended Legionella assessment plan, how to sample for Legionella, how to test for Legionella, and how to treat Legionella contamination. And in the end, we'll provide you information on how to use AIMTAC for Legionella testing service. So first of all, let me give you an introduction for the Legionella. So what is Legionella? It is a bacteria, it's gram-negative, rough-shaped bacteria. The cross-section diameter is about 0.3 to 0.9 micrometer with the length about two to three micrometer. Currently, there are more than 60 species and more than 70 serogroups of Legionella has been found. Half of the species are associated with human disease. So Legionella can cause pneumonia and Pontiac fever. The disease is mostly caused by exposing to water aerosols or small water droplets that contain Legionella. They are very rare transmission from person to person. Currently, the data shows the death rate for Legionella disease about 10%. So where does Legionella come from? Actually, Legionella is ubiquitous in the environment. It exists in common fresh water, such as water, river, and ponds. But Legionella tends to form within biofilms. And there are studies shows that Legionella can grow within amoeba and protozoa. So stagnant water that harbors biofilm can cause problem of Legionella. Water building, uh, building, building system that have water, uh, have second water or dead ends could harbor Legionella. And uh, the ideal temperature for Legionella growth is about 26 to 50 Celsius degree, which is very common for a building water system. The path of transmission for Legionella is the naturally occurred Legionella will go into the building water system and grow within the building water system if there is biofilm formed. It can spread outside the environment uh, through aerosolization, usually through shower heads or faucets, and inhaled by susceptible host, uh, usually is immunocompromised people, and they are caused the infection of Legionella uh, disease. So Legionella was first come into the spotlight in 1976, where there is an American Legion convention held in Philadelphia. Many senior people attended that convention and got sick with pneumonia. And later on, it was diagnosed that they were infected by a bacteria. So the bacteria was named as Legionella pneumophila because it was found in the American Legion convention and it caused pneumonia. Health departments reported that nearly 10,000 cases in 2018 alone. Most of the cases happens uh, when people contract the disease from hospitals, hotels, and long-term care facilities. 
some, uh, some of the most recent cases, including outbreaks re, uh, associated with cooling towers, senior homes, sports and fit, fit, uh, fitness facilities. So you might wonder, um, is there any guidelines or regulations for Legionella? So currently there's no hard lines or standards for Legionella contamination. However, there are multiple organizations that have guidelines for Legionella levels. EPA has guidelines for Legionella with the maximum contamination level goal of zero for Legionella which means that it is recommended that the water system should not have any Legionella at all. However, it's not mandatory. ASHRAE has a guidelines for Legionella. Uh, it will focus, it basically focuses on the uh, design, operation, and maintenance, repair, replacement, and expansion. So it is focusing on the prevention for Legionella and the control of Legionella. CDC on the website has a very comprehensive list for the Legionella. It including uh, introduction for the Legionnaires disease, guidelines for clinical labs and the doctors, uh, sampling protocols, testing protocols, guidelines for reporting, guidelines for water management. And last but not least, CDC has a program to evaluate the lab that performing Legionella isolation. It is called Environmental Legionella Isolation Techniques Evaluation, uh, abbreviated as ELITE. And our company, Imtech, is, is one of the active uh, participating member of the program. OSHA also has guidelines for Legionella, which put focus on the uh, control, like source identification and investigation protocols. AIHA, American Industrial Hygiene Association, has published a book uh, for technical framework for Legionella control. It is a very detailed uh, protocols for looking at the fundamental knowledge uh, for Legionella uh, and also can recognize potential hazards and building water system assessment domains. It also summarizes the response coordination and provides some links and resources for the training purpose. There are many other guidelines. Uh, published by other organizations. For example, American Society for Testing and Materials, Association for, of Water Technologies, Cooling Technology Institute, US Department of Veteran Affairs, because they are also to some extent uh, related to Legionella. Um, we're also gonna talk about recommended Legionella assessment plan. Here, I'm gonna to give an example based on the AIHA recommendations. How to assess the Legionella risk as at your facility. So first of all, you will have a very good understanding of your water distribution system. So you will need to obtain a detailed description of the building water system, and also identify any building water sources that could be a potential Legionella source. Uh, for example, where the water temperature is uh, among the ideal growth range for Legionella, which is about 26 to 48 Celsius. And also where the water is stored and recirculated because here uh, usually st stagnant water will exist here. And also identify the locations of possible dead lags in the water system. Usually the dead lags is uh, coming from the poor design of the water distribution system, but sometimes it's hard to avoid. And also look at the water source that, uh, water area that may contain nutrient source, such as rust, slush, scale, organic matter, and biofilms. Usually it happens in very old uh, pipelines because the pipeline tends to corrode and form biofilms and also look at the water source that can produce water droplets and the people uh, where the location people are likely to be exposed to water aerosols, such as sprinklers, um, showers or eye wash. And also look at if there is any construction sites going on because uh, construction can cut off the pipelines or stop the usage of the water, which could uh, create uh, stagnant water. 
There are also other guidelines that have information for the assessment plan. As we uh, talked about in the previous section, AIHA, CDC, OSHA, and ASHRAE all have guidelines for the assessment plan. And we recommend you to contact the qualified professionals, such as industrial hygienists and environmental consultant companies to investigate when there is a Legionella outbreak. Uh, and of course, MTAC have a list of qualified professionals. So you're more than welcome to also reach out to us to get the list of professionals. For the next section, we're gonna talk about sampling for Legionella. And I'm gonna to give stage to my colleague, Thomas. Hi, Thomas. Hello, everyone. I'm Thomas, and we'll start to go over the sampling plans for Legionella testing. Uh, so first off, you'd want to locate uh, your incoming water supply, uh, whichever water might be entering the building, and determine the sampling sites at the facility you wish to test. Um, then you would determine what kind of collection method you would want to go through and then list the number of samples for each source and note whether it is a pre-flush or post-flush uh, of the water system. Uh, you can specify special instructions for the collection and then make sure to record all relevant data, including the temperature of the water, pH, any disinfectant levels, uh, or any other uh, information that might be relevant. Um, then obtain uh, information regarding recent treatment and cleaning schedule. So for sampling potable water systems, uh, you'd want to focus on the incoming water mains. Uh, you would want to check water softeners or any holding tanks, water heating tanks, uh, faucets and taps, and any showers. For other systems, uh, such as cooling towers, uh, you want to check it if it's recently been uh, had makeup water. Uh, such as water uh, evaporating from the system, so you had to refill it up. Uh, any water basins, water sumps, or any other heat sources. Uh, you can also check humidifiers inside uh, rooms, uh, for like bubblers for oxygen or water used for respir respiratory therapy equipment. And other water sources uh, could be decorative fountains, uh, water fountains, irrigation, uh, fire sprinklers, hot tubs, uh, swimming pools. And then for the collection process, uh, make sure to wear proper PPE, uh, wear gloves, masks, uh, and goggles. Um, make sure you don't contaminate yourself with any uh, water aerosols. Uh, so you would sample using sterile bags, uh, swabs, or bottles that we can provide. Uh, make sure the water, uh, the sampling uh, apparatus has a sodium thiol sulfate in it. Uh, which will help neutralize the chlorine inside the water. Uh, make sure to store it inside coolers uh, if you have a lot of samples and use ice packs to keep the samples cool. Uh, have bubble wrap ready as well if you plan to ship it to us. And then for the sample submission, uh, fill out the COC chain of custody forms, uh, which we will go over later. Um, and make sure to have like pens uh, to like record all the information. And plastic bags are useful to keep your paperwork dry. So for sample collection, if you're using a swab, uh, these are more ideal for using it on faucets or shower heads and pipelines. Um, so you would sample uh, swabs before collecting the waters uh, in case there's any uh, bacteria just uh, in the biofilm on the surface you're testing. Uh, so you would uh, turn on the water a little bit just to get it a little moist. And then uh, if, it's a, if it has like a shower head, uh, try to remove it to try to get inside the, the piping. Uh, polyester, Dacron, or polypropylene swabs are the best. Uh, try not to use uh, cotton-based swabs because they can inhibit Legionella growth. And then keep the sample moist uh, with a little bit of the water from the source you're testing. And then label, make sure to label each uh, swab with the location you're sampling. Uh, it's not mix up samples. Uh, for water collection, um, it's recommended if it's potable clean water to get at least one liter of the water. Um, the amount of water that you provide will determine the detection limit of uh, that sample. 
Uh, so you would want to let the water run until it's warm, but not too hot. Um, the heat could uh, potentially kill any Legionella that's there. So it could give uh, false positives or false negatives. Uh, and then the goal is to just get the water uh, and any potential biofilms inside the piping. And um, for the sample bags, you don't have to fill them all the way to the top, just to leave a little gap is fine. And for cooling tower, uh, the recommended uh, would be between 100 milliliters and one liter. Uh, the, we sample less for cooling towers because they tend to be uh, non-potable, uh, meaning there's more bacteria present. So you don't want too much uh, of the sample because uh, it could potentially overload when we do the filtration process. And then there's also uh, air sampling you can do. Um, it could uh, potentially pick up Legionella in aerosolized water droplets, uh, but OSHA highly recommends not doing this way because um, it's not very effective. Uh, it could lead to a lot of false negatives. So it's better to get the direct water source itself. Um, the CDC recommends using the uh, Anderson samplers using BCYE, uh, which is a buffered charcoal yeast extract media. And you can also use BCYE with uh, GVPC. Uh, GVPC is just uh, for uh, antibiotics that help screen out uh, background bacteria. Uh, it contains glycine, polymycin B, cyclohexamide, and vancomycin. Uh, so ideally, if you're sampling uh, using the Air Anderson method, you would place the sampler uh, in a location that would be representative of where a person would be. Uh, like if it's a sitting area, you, you wanna put it at like the like table level. So you could sample where people are, are more likely to breathe in. Uh, and also make sure to include a background uh, check before the aerosol source is turned on. Uh, so we have something to uh, compare it against. Uh, the recommended time would be about 15 to 30 minutes at 28.3 liters per minute. And then you can use different stage samplers to estimate the potential aerosol penetration into the lungs. And then for the sampling procedures, uh, it includes a lot of hot water, whirlpool areas, fountains, sprinklers, uh, basically anywhere that water can escape from or comes out of and has the potential to get aerosolized uh, would be a good area for sampling. And ideally it should be tested within 24 hours of sample collection, uh, but the CDC allows for up to 72 hours. Um, this is because you don't want the Legionella to stay free flowing in the water source for too long because they could potentially die off, which would lead to a lot of false negatives. And then I will return it over back to Brooke for how we test for Legionella at, here at Amtec. Thank you, Thomas. So I'm gonna to jump into the testing for Legionella. So for testing Legionella, um, today I'm gonna to talk about first is after collection, how would you want to handle the sample? And then also talk about three major testing methods that is currently available in the market and also how to interpret the report and also the guidelines and recommended actions after you detected the Legionella. For sample handling, uh, Thomas already talked briefly about it. So CDC recommend ship the samples to the lab within 72 hours and start analysis. Uh, our lab usually recommend you to ship the sample and test it, have it tested within 24 hours an overnight carrier is recommended. During the shipment or transportation, it is recommended that you protect the samples from extreme heat, cold, and direct sunlight. So you can use an insulated cooler or a box with styrofoam and uh, put some ice packs in the box. Um, sample can be held at room temperature if delivered the same day to the lab. You can drop off or um, order sample pickup from the laboratory. For swap samples, it's recommended that 
the swap should be kept moist and cool. Um, the first method we are going to talk about is the culture plate method, because it is still considered as the golden standards in this uh, Legionella testing industry. CDC, ISO, and the standard method for water testing all have a sections for Legionella culture plate method. The three um, organizations publish this method, but they are essentially the same process. The difference could lie in the pore size of the filter they recommended, the different selective medium and treatment process they recommended. The advantage of a culture plate method is that it can detect viable cells, which makes sense because the Legionella has to be viable uh, to be pathogenic. And also after isolating the bacteria, it can be serotyped directly. Um, and last but not least, all the exposure and action guidelines are actually based on the culture method result. The other one, a disadvantage of a culture plate method is that it did, uh, it does need uh, long incubation times. Yearly Legionella is very slow growing and they need seven to 10 days. And when there is a very high background bacteria load, it could overwhelm the plate and uh, inhibit the Legionella growth or covers Legionella. And also is heavily dependent on the analyst experience. At MTAC, we have a microbiologist that has been working with Legionella samples for over 10 years. Um, so in that aspect, we are pretty confident that we can detect Legionella. For the medium used, um, is usually a selective medium designed for Legionella. Uh, particularly, it contains l cysteine which is essential for Legionella growth. Sometimes VCYE plays with antibiotics is also used in order to select the Legionella out of the non-Legionella bacteria. Sometimes you can also use GPVC, which is the glycine plus the antibiotic place on the BCYE. It can be further selective. However, sometimes uh, Legionella domotii and also some strains of the Legionella mcmandii can be inhibited on the GPVC plates. So for the water and the, uh, for the water samples, when there is a low count of bacteria, the water needs to be concentrated and via sample filtration. For the high count, usually it's non potable water. For example, cooling tower water, we can perform just direct plating and we'll have a very high count for bacteria already. Um, you can also perform a heat and acid treatment on the sample to get rid of the non-Legionella bacteria. So the picture shows that a combination of different methods to select Legionella. On the first place, it is a BCYE. So there are Legionella and some other bacteria growing on it. With more treatment added, for example, antibiotics and heat treatment, there are uh, less and less bacteria growing on the place. Uh, usually Legionella can survive through all the treatment but not all the other non-Legionella bacteria can survive. So how do we identify Legionella? Legionella has a very distinct morphology feature. It is about two to four millimeters in diameter. It's round, bright, and wide centered. Uh, particularly, it has a cut glass texture appearance and sometimes have the iridescent margin. Some of the Legionella species are also autofluorescent. For example, Legionella anisa, Legionella cherryi, Legionella dumofii, and many other species. So at the lab, the colony will be identified and grouped into different morphological groups. Selective, uh, a representative colony will be selected and subcultured onto a TSA plate. With, which is a gener generic medium that can be used for culturing bacteria. This medium does not contain l cysteine So Legionella, since it needs l cysteine to grow, it cannot grow on TSA. So if no growth of the bacteria is observed on the TSA plate, it means that the bacteria could be Legionella. However, there are some other bacteria can also um, uh, also cannot survive on TSA. 
So eventually we will need to do DNA sequencing to confirm the identity of the bacteria. Also for the culture method, we can do serotype. Serotype is also referred to as a uh, zero group. It is not a taxonomy group like genus or species. It is referring to the bacteria that possessing a common antigen. For example, Legionella pneumophila currently have uh, 16 known zero groups. There might be more. Um, the zero group is associate, associated with virulence. Uh, usually, Legionella pneumophila zero group one is considered as the most virulent zero group. Also, Legionella zero group four and six are also virulent. Um, previously, zero group is used for source tracking. However, with the new technology uh, coming up, whole genome, whole genome sequencing, for example, now is most commonly used for source tracking of Legionella contamination issues. Um, there are some commercially available uh, glutination kits for Legionella pneumophila serotyping. They usually can separate the Legionella pneumophila into serotype 1 versus serotype 2 to 14 or serotype 2 to 15. Sometimes uh, some of the kit can also serotype Legionella species. Here is an example of how the glutination would look, look like. So the tiny latex beads coated with antibody uh, is suspended in the liquid from the kit. And if the cells are positive for serotypes antigen, the antibodies on the latex beads will bind to the cells and then clump together, which is referred to as agglutination. So in the picture, you will see that number two has agglutination form particles on the uh, card whereas the others are pretty clear. So these are negative, but number two is a positive for the zero group that being tested. To sum up the culture methods, for culture method, we can test the water, swab, and air samples. Legionella is very slow growing, so need uh, about seven to 10 days of culturing and also need a special medium. We can use selective methods to se selectively culture in Legionella out of the non-Legionella background bacteria. Um, the result will be reported as CFU per male for water and a CFU per sample for swabs. At IMTAC, the detection limit is, can, be, uh, can be as low as 0.05 CFU per male, but it is uh, depending on the filtered sample volume the plated volume and the background bacteria concentration. The advantage of culture method is that the colony can be serotyped directly. There's another culture method available in the market. It is called LegioAlert. This method is developed by IDEX. Um, they also have products for detecting coliform, uh, E. coli, enterococci, and pseudomonas. This method is bacterial enzyme detection technology, where the Legionella, will, uh, where the wells contains Legionella pneumophila will turn brown. And the result will be reported with an MPN table. Um, there are some limitations of the Legio Alert method. Um, for example, it can only detect Legionella pneumophila. And currently it is not a standard method. Uh, however, it is approved by the CDC elite program. It still needs seven days of incubation. And if there's any positive, and uh, if you need to obtain the isolate, still isolation needs to be performed from the broth. A third method we want to talk about in this webinar is the real-time PCR or PCR method. It is the targeting at the DNA of the Legionella. This method, the sampling process is the same as the uh, sampling process for culture methods is only different in the processing. The water sample will be filtered and the DNA will be extracted. Then the PCR polymerase chain reaction will be performed on the samples. Um, usually the, uh, there will be some primers um, with uh, fluorescent labeled dyes on it. Um, there are probe and cybergreen technologies for the qPCR. The instrument will read the fluorescent intensity uh, after each cycle of the PCR. 
and then the increased risk of the fluorescence during the PCR is directly related to the copy numbers of Legionella DNA in the sample. Um, for this method, the result will be reported as gene unit per mil or gene unit per sample. That is uh, different from CFU per mil. The advantage of a PCR method is that it can be very fast within one day. So as long as we got the water sample, we can perform the de-instruction right away and then following by the PCR reactions. So there's no incubation time. The background bacteria will not be an issue because uh, the target, the primer and the probes usually are targeting at the Legionella or Legionella pneumophila. The cells do not need to be remain viable because the method is targeting at the DNA. However, this is also the disadvantage of the PCR method. Because it is targeting at the DNA, it cannot discriminate between live or dead bacteria. Even the bacteria is non-viable, the DNA is still there. So the method will still pick up, uh, which might uh, have trouble when you interpreting the result. Also, there might be inhibition to PCR if the water sample is very dirty. For example, cooling tower water. Um, in, when inhibition happens, we might need to perform dilutions, which means the detection limit will be compromised. But why sometimes people still use the PCR method is because it is a rapid screening uh, method for a large water system. For example, there is an outbreak in a hotel and there is uh, over 100 rooms. It might be very hard to uh, do the culture method and find where the contam contamination comes from immediately. In this case, real-time PCR method can help you locate the source uh, very quickly. Um, so what to do if there is a positive result? Uh, usually it is recommended that still follow up with the culturing because if there is any positive, there could be live or dead bacteria there. So a culture method is still recommended to uh, make sure that the bacteria is alive or dead at the site. Um, if you want to submit both, uh, uh, submit samples for both PCR and the culture method, the sample can be split in the lab or you can perform side-by-side -side sampling. So after you get the test result, how to interpret the result? For OSHA, it has a recommendation table, have two action levels. Action level one is prompt cleaning and the biocide treatment of the system. Um, action level two is immediate cleaning or biocide treatment of the system. Um, so it is when you have a higher bacterial load, you want to uh, act quickly. EPA also uh, has a guidelines for the uh, action level, which is a zero as the ma uh, maximum concentration level go, which we have attached in the introduction for the guidelines. So for the next section, we're gonna talk about how to prevent and treat when there is a potential Legionella threat. So I'm gonna to, uh, switch back to Thomas So for preventative measures and treatments, uh, always be sure to refer to the guidelines presented by AIHA, ASHRA, OSHA, and to the CDC. Um, you would want to look at your building design and try to minimize uh, pipe turning and connections and avoid dead ends, because uh, that's usually where biofilms can form when there's no flowing water. Uh, you'd want to have a man water management plan set up uh, for routine cleaning and routine monitoring. Uh, Legionella uh, is best grown between uh, 25 and 45 degrees Celsius. Um, and you wanna keep your water, you, you wanna keep your cold water cold and you wanna keep your hot water hot. Uh, try not to have your water sources uh, alternate. And then you want to prevent stagnation. Um, always just keep your water uh, systems uh, just continually uh, flushing around and maintain the proper disinfectant levels. Um, in case of positives or um, positive Legionella, 
you'd want a uh, supplemental disinfection disinfectants uh, to help uh, kill them off. For treatments, you'd want to flush uh, with hot water and use uh, disinfecting products um, such as like chlorine or monochloramine, ozone, ultraviolet light. And then how you can use our uh, Amtec testing services. Um, so we can provide uh, water sampling bottles and swabs. Uh, so you can get those from our website. Uh, so you would get our supplies and then take the water samples. Uh, and then you would pack and ship it to us. Or if you're local, you can just bring it uh, over to us same day. Uh, if you are shipping it from somewhere else, uh, you'd want to ship it overnight. Uh, and have it arrive as soon as possible the next day so we can start testing immediately. And for the holding time, uh, ideally, you'd want to have it to the lab within 48 hours. Uh, within 24 hours would be better. So you might be wondering why you would want to choose Amtec. Uh, for us, uh, we've had many years of experience uh, testing for Legionella. Uh, we actively participate in the CDC Elite program. Uh, since 2012. And since 2016, uh, we've had a 100% pass rate. Uh, we are accredited and we have a really good quality control here. Uh, we are AIHA micro lab uh, accredited and we have internal um, QC to make sure we have no issues. And we test uh, all the method, all the culturing and testing methods presented earlier. Uh, we all provide that. Uh, at this facility. And uh, with the elite program, um, we are actively validated uh, for each test we provide. And we've had uh, really good customer service for 19 years and uh, going strong. Uh, we also have a, a video on, YouTube, on our YouTube channel uh, for how to sample. Uh, and you can check that out later at your own time. Oh. Uh, and here's a image of some of the supplies we provide. And uh, here is uh, a chain of custody form. Uh, should you use our facility? Um, the main points here is in the top left. You want to fill in your company information. Uh, make sure to have a contact information so we know who to report to. Uh, make sure on the top right, you fill in your project information so you can keep track of that on your own uh, for your own, your own purposes. Uh, how you would label the uh, samples would be in the center, you can see the sample ID. So you'd want to mark uh, each sample with a unique ID number. Uh, you could do like one, two, three, four, or you could just name them based on where you sample. Uh, and then have a little description there as well. And make sure to record how much water you're sampling because that'll determine uh, the limit of detection uh, we're able to provide. And make sure to write the type of test you want. Uh, you can put the culturing method or the PCR method or LEGI alert uh, or any combination of any of the methods we provide here. And then uh, to have any questions about our testing services, you can contact our front desk, uh, Sharon Spencer, and this is uh, the inform her information provided here. And uh, now I'll open the floor up to any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brooke and Thomas. We do have a few questions that came through. Uh, let me see here. So the first question is, if we have a routine cleaning plan for our facility, for example, flush the system every month, do we still need to perform Legionella testing? Um, and if so, what testing method would you recommend? Thank you, Jessica. Um, yeah, so in that case, uh, we would still recommend testing the system um, maybe after each quarter or uh, at least biannually or at least annually. Uh, for the method, I think uh, usually the golden standard, uh, standard in this industry is the culture method. So I would recommend using the culture method. Uh, however, if there's any potential outbreaks, 
happens, you can use a qPCR or PCR method to quickly identify the source. Uh, and I did see a comment from the audience, thank you so much, saying that the OSHA might not stand by the numbers we provided in the table anymore. So thank you for um, pointing that out. So we'll double check the OSHA website for the updated uh, recommendations. Okay, perfect. Um, the next question is, what do I need to do if there, uh, what do I need to do if there is Legionella detected, but they are not Legionella pneumophila? Do we still need to be concerned about the result? Yeah, that's a very good question uh, because many of our customers has asked us this question as well. Uh, for Legionella, there are many species. Uh, usually Legionella pneumophila is associated with the disease. However, there are some studies published that showing uh, other Legionella species could also cause disease. Um, I think it depends on the strain and also depends on the people that contract the bacteria. Sometimes they might have a long, uh, long-term uh, uh, conditions already, such as cancer or other immunocompromised people. So we usually we would still recommend to do a clean up if you detect other Legionella species. Okay, great, thank you, Brooke. Mm -hmm. uh, this next one is about uh, sample submissions. What if I could not get the samples to the lab within 24 or 48 hours? how should we store the samples? And I guess I'll uh, just add to that, is that okay? Um, and can you still accept them at that point? Okay, yeah, so for the CDC guideline, it says the sample can be uh, analyzed uh, with the holding time up to 74, uh, 72 hours, which is three days. However, CDC also mentioned that in that case, the sample need to be kept refrigerated. So if you cannot get the samples into the lab within 24 hours, we really recommend you refrigerate the sample. And when uh, doing the shipment or drop off, better to keep the samples in the cooler with ice packs. And Brooke, just adding on on my own here, um, yeah. would you recommend putting the samples into the refrigerator as soon as they are sampled? Or is it okay then to put them in at that 48 hour mark? I think uh, at the lab standpoint, uh, we would recommend to put into the fridge as soon as possible, or at least uh, uh, put together with some ice packs. Okay, great. Um, another question from the audience. I shut off the water fountains in my facility, but I kept everything else running. Would I still need to perform this testing since the rest of the water line was not sitting idle? <clears throat> I think that, that's also a very good question. Um, from my understanding, if there is any stagnant water, um, then there is a potential risk that biofilm could be formed. So for example, if you don't use the eye wash for a very long time, however, the other part of the facility is still actively used. Um, however, there are still possibility that there is bioform, uh, biofilm formed around the eye wash pipelines. So I think particularly in that case, you should test eye wash. Did that answer your question? Um, the eye wash or the water fountains? Uh, yeah, water fountains in this case. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, another question is why, is, why is Legionella testing and monitoring particularly important after the COVID shutdown? Yeah, I think that is the purpose we have with this uh, webinar. Uh, actually, we are also growing with this industry. Uh, after the COVID shutdown and the reopen, we saw many clients uh, sending samples to us. Uh, I think this is majorly because after the shutdown, the facility uh, became uh, dormant and uh, nobody was using the water for a very, very long time which could encourage the growth of bacteria within the pipeline. When there is a less uh, movement of the water, uh, there's less di disturbance to the biofilm. So it tends to form biofilm or accumulate bacteria in the water. 
So that's why after we open um, this industry, you really will see uh, more people want to test for their water. And uh, a lot of time, not just for Legionella, there are some other bacteria like uh, Pseudomonas uh, and the Cephalococcus, some other bacteria could grow in the biofilm. Okay. Um, the next question is, do you recommend both pre-flush and post-flush samples at each potable water source? Is pre-flush or post-flush more common to in to indicate Legionella in a contaminated potable water system? Mm. Um, I think from our lab experience, uh, normally we don't see clients submit both pre-flush and post-flush. So it would be more efficient if you already performed a clean up and then sample after the flushing. However, if you have an outbreak and need to investigate uh, where the Legionella come from, want to investigate the case and perform source tracking, you might want to sample actually before the flush. And of course, after the flush, you would still need to sample to make sure that the water system is clean. So I'm, uh, this is just for me personally here. I'm seeing a pattern uh, here with some of the questions. So I thought I might pose another one, um, which is basically why is it important to still test for Legionella, even if you flush your system, uh, if you flush your system either on a regular basis or you flush it after it's been shut down. Mm -hmm. um, there's a theme that I'm seeing. So if you want to touch on that a little bit. Yeah, so for right now, um, there's a no hard line, no regulation standards uh, about when or uh, when to test the Legionella. Uh, so it really depends on the uh, water management team of the building or of the facility to decide. Um, so from the conference that I have participated before talking about the Legionella, um, there are some uh, uh, states or countries recommend that there's no need to test if you have already have a routine uh, flushing. However, um, people might be held responsible <laughs> if there is any uh, outbreak afterwards. So we would still uh, recommend to do routine testing, even though you have a, a very well, uh, very good management uh, system to make sure you flush it routinely but the routine testing should be incorporated as part of the water management plan. Um, I do see some facilities like hospitals and long-term care facilities, uh, which are our clients, they perform a routine testing at least uh, annually. Okay. Um, the next question that came here, do you test total bacteria count when you test Legionella samples? Do you recommend this testing? I would think that total bacterial count has a value in assessing water quality, even when Legionella is absent. What do you think? Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, actually, at some point, uh, we tried to offer total bacteria count together with Legionella, um, but I think maybe it's uh, budget related. Some of the clients might want to just test for Legionella, um, but actually, uh, you are right, whoever uh, posed this question is a great question. Um, so not because not just Legionella could cause disease, there might be some other bacteria. So APC or heterotropic uh, plate count is a good indicator uh, for how good the water system is uh, in terms of uh, um, preventing growth of bacteria. Yes. Great, thank you, Brooke. Um, that is all the questions that seem to have come through so far. Does anyone have any last minute questions before we wrap up here? We had a lot of great questions come through. So thank you guys for your participation and, and attention. And uh, someone said, are the slides available? The recording, we're recording the webinar and we'll make it available both on our YouTube page and on our website. And we'll send out an email once that's ready, should be by the end of the week, um, or at least at the very most within a week from today, um, but, should be, but should be by Friday. Okay, well, thank you so much, Brooke and Thomas.
Uh, if there are no other questions for today, I want to thank everyone again for joining us. If uh, you have any more questions that come through, please feel free to shoot an email to us at lab at amtech.com and we'll be sure to get back to you with an answer. We also encourage everyone who's interested in Legionella testing to reach out so we can schedule a meeting to discuss your needs um, or any other questions or information that you may want to discuss. And thank you again so much for attending and we look forward to seeing you at our future webinars. Have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.